If you've ever broken off a big bass on the hook set and you almost pissed your pants or cried, go ahead, click the like and subscribe button, guys. My name is Connery from Out of Work Outdoors. Today, we're talking about May Bass. This is part of the ongoing series of Fishing Explained 2021, where every month we uh, introduce baits, locations and wind time frames on when to catch your fish so we have a striper series of a bass series and a white bass series this video is specifically focused on bass so in may May, for the most part, the spawn is over. So you gotta you gotta do a little bit of um, post spawn, and you gotta do a lot of just offshore type stuff. So, so the guys that are throwing sinkos, it's pretty much done. Even for us, the sinkhole world, uh, the last three tournaments, you see us throwing a lot of sinkos. We didn't practice. We go in, so you just throw sinkos everywhere, right? But from now on, now on out, the fish don't. They're not on the beds anymore. So you gotta get more creative. You have to uh, kind of plant. Ooh, plant things out a little bit a little bit more so so the major thing for this month that we did not introduce last month was top water the fish are active the temps are above 60 right now they're chasing shad they're chasing bluegills they're chasing gizzard shads they're chasing other bass they're chasing crappies I mean the whole world is revolving right now right so there's a big shad spawn there's a big carp spawn there's a lot of eggs the whole party's going. What do you do? My mind says throw top water. Throw a top water all day. I said top water, but there's a lot of top waters. Let me explain. When I say top water, majority of the people are thinking this guy. Something like this. This is a yellow magic Havana. It's pretty pretty expensive JDM lure. But it works really good. Okay, works really good. It's a spook style. What I do like about it, it's high quality, casts really far. Way better than any uh, headden or anything like that. So it's high quality, cigar shape. Most people think, just throw this. And it's true, in the mornings, this guy is pretty good. But when you talk to us about topwater, if it's a hard bait, it's something wrong the lines of this. This is a pencil popper. This is a six inch pencil popper or five and a half inch pencil popper from Evergreen. This is the Shower Blows 125. As you can see, there's a lot of hook rash on there because we've been throwing this guy a lot, okay? Uh, change the hooks out, they're all EWGs now. Why EWGs? Because I fish over the grass a lot. Uh, what I found out just from uh, experience is you have straight shank hooks and EWG hooks, right? The, the EWG is what the hook that bends almost backwards, kind of like that. Yes, the EWGs tend to not hook up as good, but once on it, you got the fish. So uh, the, when I'm fishing around grass and brush and things like that, uh, if I catch a fish and he slaps at it, I kind of just get him. And he wraps me around something. It always gets off. It always gets off. So at least for, in my opinion, if you go with EWG, he slaps at it. He doesn't get it. You still got another shot at him. Whereas the straight shank hooks... If he wraps you around anything or in buries you in the grass, they always get off. So for me, it's worth the risk to go to EWG. And if you catch him, if he gets on there, even with just one point, you're good. So that's why I throw it. EWG hooks. But when I but when I talk top water this time of this time of the month, uh, I'm thinking these guys. Hollow belly, hollow belly frogs. So these are pretty much still my two favorites, or one of them's missing. But, you know, in terms of frogs, for the poppin' frogs, I like the Spro poppin' frog. I like this color too. And as you can see, you know, lots and lots and lots of teeth marks on this guy. I mean, I don't know if your camera can pick that up, but lots and lots of teeth marks. And since last year, this is my new favorite frog. It is... A scum launch frog, I think it's what it's called. Yeah, scum frog has a launch frog. It's slightly heavier than your traditional frog, 
but it's got a big hole in the bottom, but yet water can get in, but this frog never sinks. Okay, it's something crazy. Some they did something about this shell of a frog. And the hooks are the best in the industry. It's just a really good frog. That's what it is. It's a really good frog. Uh, it doesn't come in your white or black. It comes in all these cool colors. Okay. And like I said, it's my favorite frog. Best hookup ever on this. I could throw this on a surf rod on a big flat. Yeah, I said it. Surf rod. Big flats. But that's the frog I want to throw if I'm just going to bomb it out there. That's why it's called a launch frog. If I'm targeted, you know, casting, a little popping frog. Okay. And also the other thing is if it's windy, popping frog works a little better than the regular frog. Keep that in mind. I could throw this all day, even during tournament hours. If I could get... If I get a solid bite in the morning going on this, I'll, I'll basically continue to throw it all day. If I'm just fun fishing, throwing it all day, you know. Frogs. So that's what I mean when I say top water. So you can even throw a little popper in there too, you know. That, that's cool too. Then by that time, you already got like five rods laid out, all top waters. So the big pencil popper, that's more for big points, clay points, kind of a flat point. Uh, a lot of the big fish will actually stage on that because in the morning, shad spawn has happened, all right? Shad spawns happen, shattered now, wherever they are, deep water. I don't think the bass go out to deep water sometimes. I think sometimes they just hang out in that five-foot zone. They just hang out. So if you throw on a big pencil popper and you're just walk, walking over his head, it's just splashing water everywhere. I think it's tempting for him to come up and just swipe at it one time, you know? You might not get a couple bites, you get one bite. But when you get the bite, it's a big one, okay? That's why. That's why we throw the big top water all day. And then, you know, of course, the frogs, you're around vegetation or some type of brush, that type of stuff. And uh, next on the list, we got deep cranking. So for me, I fish kayaks a lot. So deep cranking is pretty much 10 to 15 foot. So 10 to 15 foot. I'm throwing these two. And then these are the colors that I usually just have. That's it. Uh, chartreuse blue back, chartreuse blue back. Okay, that's all I got. 5XD from Strike King, cast fairly well. Change your hooks out. These are size two owners, these are size two owners. Um, that's it. I weigh them down every once in a while just so I could get them down a little bit farther. But this is supposed to be a 10 to like 15 foot diver. I could get it down 16, 17 on a 12 pound line, uh, big rod. Um, chuck it out there and just burn it back. Same with this little guy too. This is probably, I've won the most money on this guy. The most money on this guy. Um, if you want to consider tournament wins. Uh, Rapala DT10. I know my brother loves this one too, especially this color. And in Oklahoma off-water colors, this one's really good. This one's really, really good. Uh, with with two uh, hooks on there. Not two uh, Size two owners on there. Fish usually don't get away. We get a really good, really good land bite to land ratio with that combination right there. So like I said, it's a Rapala DT10. This is one of the Iconelli colors. And been, you know, been pretty happy with it. I catch a lot of good fish on this too. So that's my deep cranking setup. Uh, I crank it anytime I get the chance. So usually... Uh, you have to find some type of offshore like rock pile or a stump or something like that and then you'll you can crank that on it usually does pretty good All right, but that's a, a deep cranking is hard work I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and say it's not because you gotta find the stuff And then you cast to it and then if it doesn't work you put it away It's not one of those things where you just go down the bank and just, just keep at it like like the top water stuff Okay, so it's very very specific targeted areas on the big crank and so is the big worm the big worm you just don't throw it anywhere it's very specific target this target that rock pile brush pile brush pile big worm so when it comes to a big worm i'm talking uh zoom old monster you'll see that but zoom old monster worm Zoom old monster. This is the California 420 color. Basically, what it is is a bunch of green pumpkin. Uh, it's a dark green pumpkin, and it's got some red flakes. Like half the worm is clear, half the worm is kind of dark. Wow, this is one of the ones that look good to me. Just picked it up. I know red bud's pretty good. Uh, plum this time of year, really, really good. Um, 
but it's on you, you know, it's on you. But it's a big worm. Uh, I put a four aught hook on it. it. Must have four aught offset worm hook and a half ounce, half ounce uh, tungsten weight on it. And basically, uh, what we do is either you find a brush pile, find a ruck pile, something offshore, and you throw this on at this time of year. It's really good. It's just really good. Um, it goes through just about everything. It's probably the bait that can go through the gnarliest things pretty good, especially with a bullet weight. So that's something that, you know, if you have a big crankbait and a big worm combination going, you're doing pretty good. And so so basically, I throw I usually throw a big worm on it first. And if it doesn't work, then I'll throw a crankbait before I move on to the next spot. Because my, my reason for that is if they're hungry, they're going to eat the big worm. If they're not, I'll make them bite. If I can't do that, I'm gone. Okay? And of course, the last one is a chatterbait. Last one's a chatterbait. This is no joke. No, you know, nothing new to the channel. We've talked about this. We have an entire video dedicated to this. This is going to be the jackhammer chatterbait. Okay? Uh, the other baits are good too, but this one's definitely the one that's going to take the cake for me. Um, we've done, we've caught thousands of fish on this. Thousands, not even hundreds, thousands of fish on this. Between me and my brother, thousands. I'm talking 10 inch fish will smash this, small mouth, spotted bass, large mouth, white bass, stripers, hybrids, drum, caught catfish. Oh, channel cats, blue cats, flathead catfish. We've snagged uh, gar. I actually caught gar on this too. So yeah, a little bit of everything, guys. A little bit of everything on this. This is probably one of the MVP lures. If there's a lure for all year, probably this one. But especially this time of year, the chatterbait. If you're fishing around uh, offshore grass, offshore grass this time of year. This you gotta have this. So, yep, chatterbait, offshore grass, gotta have it. Those are the baits. Let's talk about where. So for the most part, we're talking points because of the shad spawn. Okay, so you're going to run the shad spawn in the morning. It might last at max an hour and a half. So shad spawn, there's activity everywhere. The lake is alive. There's parties going on, basically. And then the sun comes up and everything shuts off. Okay, so once everything shuts off, what are you going to do? You're going to go fish your brush piles. And you have to resort back to the brush piles. The brush piles, basically, you have to throw a deep crankbait on it, or you're going to throw a big worm on it. The chatterbait is going to get hung, and the top water is not going to go that far down in the water column. All right, so that's kind of a two-pronged approach to how I do things. If I've, you know, some idea of what the lake is capable of putting out, if I'm going to just uh, show up and fish one day, I'm going to stick my top waters, and I'm going to stick with my chatterbait for the most part. But I'll still have these two rigged just in case my side imaging catches something to the side while I'm going down the bank and I'll cast a deep crank or a big worm to it. And that's how that's kind of how I approach it with all these. Now, when and where, right? Because in the morning there's a shad spawn, and then you you basically as soon as nine o'clock happens, you put all that top water stuff down and you just go offshore, focus on the brush piles. If you know the brush pile is only about five foot below the surface, you can still throw a top water over the brush pile. It can be in wide open water. Or if you have stumps, things like that, that are, you know, really, really close to the surface of the water, and the water's clean enough, you can throw a top water. Actually, you should throw a top water over it before you crank it and before you throw a big worm, you know? So it's still, so it's, it's very, very, very doable with the top waters. Because the top water will call a fish to it, but you can't run it really fast. You have to kind of play with it, walk it real slow, give the fish time to come up and smoke top water. So for, for bass fishing, you can catch them all day. You can really catch them all day. If you got a lot of brush piles, you can run a lot of brush piles. The, the shad spawn's over and done, right? So you got a lot of brush piles. Maybe you have a grass, a grass line you can you can fish or just clumps of grass with holes in it. You can do all the chatterbait deal. Because the chatterbait deal, if you got a lot of grass with a lot of holes in it, Basically, what you're going to do, throw the chatterbait as far as you can. Just kind of hop it in and out. And eventually, it's going to go into one of those holes. And that's where the big bass are hanging out. And they'll just smash it inside that hole. And you, you set the hook. And it's a four-pound plus bass. Uh, no little bass if you get into that bite. That's a really crazy bite. I've done that before. But I've never been able to do that during a tournament. I've always done, been, been able to do that 
just fun fishing or online fishing, you would catch a bunch of like three, four pounders doing that. But I think everybody knows in the online world, kayak related, kayak online fishing world, people are people are catching seven, eight pounders. Like their best five in a month, they're all seven, eight pounders. If you're catching fives and sixes, it's not even gonna really play. So the channel bait's really good at that world. The, the four, five, six pounder, really good at it. So once again, this is this is May. This is May. So these are the lures. Uh, I'll even show you my tackle box, man. Yeah, I'll show you. In terms of hard baits, this is what I got packed. So those are my favorite ones. So a lot of guys will say, look, that's not the only thing you're throwing. Yeah, it's not. But those are my preferred way of catching them. Because that's what I'm really good at. Because if I can catch them doing that, we're having a good day. Otherwise, you got to go to plan B. This is all plan B, plan C, plan D, plan E, right? So I still got square bills in there. I still got, you know, different colors of uh, DT10s. I got a couple of little wake baits, little stuff. Uh, a couple of blade baits, just in case the white bass are, are alive and kicking. Some lipless, still, you know, a red one. Uh, one half ounce and a whole bunch of quarter ounces. I'm not good into the world of lipless crankbaits, I'll admit. But there comes a time where they're going to be biting that lipless crankbait. Especially when you get there and there's a bunch of little bait around. The half ounce lipless, or quarter ounce lipless is pretty good. And, you know, those are just Strike King ones. Nothing fancy about that. And on the bottom half, this is a pretty cool tackle box, too. It's like a double layer. On the bottom half, as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of jerk baits on the side. Jerk baits, jerk baits, jerk baits, because there's a, there's a chance that you could be fishing behind somebody, right? And when you're fishing behind somebody, if they know about this, they've already tried it all. So you have to come in with a second list, basically. So for me, we're throwing jerk baits. Throwing jerk baits. Yeah, we're throwing like uh, bigger square bills. So we got a, a 2.5, 2.5 square bill, silent square bill, none of that rattling stuff. Silent, bluegill pattern, of course, bluegill pattern. And that's it. We got some prop baits. We got some pompadours. This is something that, you know, you got to fish really slow. I think a lot of people know about this lure, but no one ever advises it. I think it's pretty cool. Pompadour. Kind of walks like that. Walks really slow. You know, if you're following somebody, that's the world of tournament fishing. If you're following somebody, you got to have a plan B because more than likely, they, they're throwing all this, okay? More than likely. So you got to come in with your secret list. I just showed you guys a little bit of my secret list. So that's pretty much it for the bass fishing. Uh, bass fishing in May. Um, if you have anything you feel like I left out on, let me know in the comments. Uh, other than that, like I said, this is the first time we've introduced like top waters at the top of the list. I think last month we had near the bottom because there was a slight chance you could get into the top water bite. But this month, top water all day, live and die by the top water. Top water also produces a bigger quality of fish, if you guys haven't noticed. It always does. If you're throwing that pencil popper and something touches it, it's usually pretty good size. Usually pretty good size. The deep crank is probably the same thing. The big worm, and not really. Big worms in brush piles, big bites. We've gotten that before. Chatterbaits. Chatterbait gets you a bunch of chatterbait fish. You know, to get a real, real big fish on this, it's still iffy. But, you know, this time of year is probably the post. It's probably the best time to catch a big fish, too. Of course, they're spawned out. But in the kayak world, we don't really care because it's all inches anyways. But, yep. May, May going into June. June is going to be a crazy month. Everything starts heating up. But in June, we're going to, there is no shad spot in June. So in June, everything is brush piles. So we'll talk about brush pile fishing in June. We'll talk about equipment. We'll talk about those things. Oh, the other thing is equipment all this. If you guys want to know, I'll give you like a real, real simple thing right now. But we can talk equipment if you guys want that too. Reels, gear ratios, line diameters. Uh, rod actions, everything like that. For the top water, you're throwing braid for the most part. Braid with a real limber rod to so the hooks don't bend down. Uh, deep crank in, composite. Halfway strong, halfway limber. Because you got to have enough power to sling it because you want to sling it as far as you can. 12 pound line, maybe 30 pound braid. 12 pound line, 10 pound line for some guys. But I like, I like 12. If I'm cranking brush piles, I want to do 15. Maybe even 20, depends. 
Uh, if I'm on a crankbait, throw the square bills, it's 20. Big worms, 20 pound fluorocarbon. No excuses. Half ounce head and just hold on. Chatterbait, once again, 20 pound line, hold on. 20 pound fluorocarbon, fluorocarbon, fluorocarbon braid. You can substitute that for mono, doesn't really matter. But if you go mono, then you have to up the action on your rod. Uh, six gear ratio, seven gear ratio, eight gear ratio, six gear ratio, eight, nine, ten gear ratio. Okay, that's what that is. Hopefully that helps you guys out. Name is Connery. Once again, this is Out of Work Outdoors. Every month we do this. Sub to the channel if you haven't. Share it with your friends, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, guys? See you.